Hello and welcome to Mobility Mastery Monday. I'm Alicia and this is the place to be if you want to lose the pain, lose your fear of pain, learn to trust your body and do what you love for life. Have you ever been playing your favorite sport? Maybe it's soccer or tennis or maybe you're a trail runner and suddenly you get a muscle spasm or cramp or a muscle really just grabs your attention quite literally. If so, then you've probably experienced a muscle strain. And today I want to show you or tell you how to um, prevent this from happening and what to do if it's happening currently. So a strain happens when our brain and body detects that muscle fibers are going to get overstretched and possibly torn. And a severe strain sometimes is classified as a tear, but in my opinion, they're really two separate things. So a recent client of mine, um, a new client, came to me with a soleus strain and he's a tennis player and his soleus literally was balled up um, in the middle of his calf. You could visibly see it stuck in a contracted state. Now, why would this happen? Well, in tennis, we're required, if you play tennis, you're required to do a lot of stops and starts and forward, backwards, sideways movements. Um, so your ankle stability and agility are critical for you to do this without something like a strain happening. So the stabilizing muscles of the lower leg need to be both strong and flexible. And if they're not, something like a strain is going to happen. Now our body has built-in systems to prevent things like strains from happening. Um, kind of systems on top of systems. <laughs> um, and one of the first things that uh, the body does to ensure that a strain or tear actually isn't going to happen is something called reciprocal inhibition. Um, this is when two opposing muscle groups work synergistically to um, act on a joint. So every joint has opposing muscle groups that either flex or extend it. Um, for example, uh, the quadriceps act on the knee as well as the hamstring um, and reciprocal inhibition is happening when I contract my hamstring, the quad has to stretch and relax. Um, if it doesn't, both muscle groups would be contracted at the same time, and that is when a tear is very likely to happen. So reciprocal inhibition really just means that um, if you contract one muscle, its opposite naturally relaxes to allow that to happen. So another way our body will prevent a tear is through something called a stretch reflex, and it's reciprocal inhibition combined with the stretch reflex that if you use to your advantage can help you recover from a strain and hopefully, ideally, prevent it from happening in the first place. A stretch reflex happens when we move a muscle fibers through a certain range of motion and if our brain detects that those muscle fibers could get torn if they keep stretching, it'll enact a powerful contraction to bring those muscle fibers back and stop them from being stretched. Sound familiar? So this is kind of where a pulled muscle or the strain actually happens. It's when a stretch reflex occurs to prevent a tear. Okay, so bringing these two things together, reciprocal inhibition and the stretch reflex, if your body detects that two opposing muscle groups are contracting at the same time, it'll likely enact a stretch reflex to prevent a tear from happening. And this is when you get a pulled or strained muscle. So in the case of my recent client who came to me, I believe that his um, lateral muscles, the uh, and anterior, the tibialis anterior and peroneals were inhibiting his medial or posterior stabilizing muscles, the soleus and tibialis posterior. And through reciprocal inhibition and the stretch reflex, we're trying to actually prevent a tear and that's why his soleus kind of balled up. So if this, has happened to you, then that's likely the same cause. It is kind of a common thing in something like tennis for this to happen. Um, the most common areas that we get strains or pulled muscles are the calves, the hamstrings, <clears throat> the groin, and maybe the neck. If you've ever, you know, slept wrong and woke up and you can't even turn your head from side to side, that's probably actually a stretch reflex um, enacted in the neck to prevent you from tearing your trap muscle. Okay, so what do you do if you're currently experiencing a strained or pulled muscle? Well, my number one piece of advice would be go to its opposite and release that, release the fascia in that muscle, or use a PNF stretch to get the muscle fibers to relax. So for example, if it's your calf you have a strain in, you would want to go to the tibialis anterior or the peroneals. If it's your hamstring, you'll want to go to the quads. 
Um, if it's your neck, you might want to actually go to, um, if it's the back of the neck, the traps, you might want to go to your SCMs or scalenes, something in the front, um, and on and on. So no matter where your strain is in your body, you'll want to look for its opposite and go to that and try to relax or release it. If you're really committed to healing as quickly and efficiently as possible, then I highly recommend releasing everything around that strained muscle so blood can get in there, nerves can communicate, and your brain can realize that the danger of tearing that muscle is over and that muscle can now kind of chill out and relax. And then last, you could actually go to the muscle that's strained and very gently use a little bit of compression and slow movement to help it kind of relax and lengthen back out. So if it's like balled up in that knot, you would basically just, you know, whatever it is, find a tool you can use to gently compress it and move through a range of motion where you're gonna lengthen it back out. Now, in order to prevent strains from happening in the first place, you'll wanna make sure that your most commonly used muscles and the fascia within them are lengthened or flexible and that the fascia is released. So it's important that both the fascia and the muscle fibers be healthy. Um, obviously, in an ideal world, you would pay attention to your entire body and make sure this is happening everywhere. But if you feel pressed for time, um, if you're an athlete or you do a certain sport, just figure out which are the most common muscles that you use and make sure to take care of that muscle group and its opposite. Um, or the several muscle groups that you use the most. I mean, common examples would be quads and hamstrings, calves and um, tibialis anterior, um, etc. So you can kind of go to those major muscle groups and work those and get some pretty good prevention results by doing so. So I've talked before in previous episodes about the difference between healthy fascia and flexibility or inflexibility and the differences and similarities between the two or how they overlap. Um, in the case of preventing strains or pulled muscles, both are really important. So if you're an athlete, you definitely want to have some kind of fascial release um, practice that you do to keep your fascia healthy. And you want to make sure you're mobile and flexible and those muscle fibers are able to move with you through whatever range of motion you're asking them to. All right, let's recap. A strain is most likely to occur when reciprocal inhibition isn't functioning and opposing muscle groups start to contract simultaneously. Your body detects the danger of a tear and enacts a stretch reflex, resulting in a pulled or strained muscle. And tip number one to relieve the strain is to release the opposite muscle group. And tip number two is go to whatever is strained last and help it relax rather than trying to go to it first and force it to relax without taking care of its opposite that is inhibiting it. For the full blog post accompanying this video, you can click the link below. If you want exclusive updates emailed to you weekly in our newsletter, you can subscribe at mobilitymastery.com. Subscribe for new episodes here on YouTube that come out every Monday. If you like this video, then please like and share it, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I hope you're learning to trust your body so you can adventure through life with confidence.